Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Miki Matrushin. I'm a partner at WR Immigration in the Boston office. Hi, everybody. I'm Kimberly Bess-Robodeau, a partner at WR Immigration on the other coast in San Diego. Good to see you all. Great. So we're here to give you some updates on the CAP H-1B season and some new USCIS technology enhancements. So uh, CAP registration dates have just been confirmed. It's going to be from March 6th to March 22nd, noon Eastern time. And USCIS also confirmed that the registration fee will be $10 this year and not the new fee of $215 that won't be in effect until next year's cap. So we're staying this year at the $10. Um, the lottery will be based again on electronic registrations as with past years, you know, submitted by employers. And we wanted to tell you all about USCIS's upgrade uh, of the platform for companies and attorney accounts and how this is gonna impact the lottery registrations. And these accounts are also gonna be used for online filings with USCIS. Um, so we'll tell you all about these changes and give you some practical tips for HR. I'm glad that we're finally kind of moving further into the 21st century with USCIS's technologies. So Kimberly, can you tell us about the organizational accounts that are going to be implemented? Yeah, these organizational accounts are created online via the My USCIS website. They're going to allow multiple individuals within an organization, um, as well as their legal representatives to collaborate on H-1B cap registrations, H-1B petitions, and premium processing requests for H-1Bs. Um, and this is actually going to be a platform that is one where everybody can collaborate. So we're really excited about that. Awesome. So before we go into more detail on the new account system, can you quickly tell us about what the old system looked like? Yeah, so in the old system, the HR teams would create a My USCIS account, um, and that was with the company information, you know, legal name, address, federal employer identification number, and then the legal representatives would create their own My USCIS account, and then these accounts would be linked. The legal representative, you know, the attorney would prepare the H one B cap registration and then would coordinate with the company by sending them a passcode, essentially a handshake to link the accounts. The company representative could then review and see if the information was accurate. One of the things that was um, a little bit difficult is that if everything wasn't 100% correct, the company rep would just be able to decline. So they couldn't credit anything, which meant everything went back to the attorney to redo um, or update, and then there would be another passcode with a handshake for the company representative. And then finally, once everything was okay, the legal representative could submit the registration and pay the fee directly to USCIS. So in some instances, there was a lot more back and forth with this process. Yeah, that used to be a headache. So the new system won't be so static, right? Will there be a, new, a handshake requirement under the new system? You know, so essentially, um, this system is going to be a lot more dynamic when the accounts um, have the initial collaboration, right? So when um, the company working group reaches out to the attorney to ask them to join the group, or if the attorney reaches out to the company to ask them to join the group, that's going to replace the handshake. So if this new platform is going to allow the attorneys and the HR teams to more readily review and edit and do everything they need to do in the cap registration without having to do this extra step with a handshake. So Kimberly, when will the new system be available? So with the USCIS announcement this week, they have let us know that this new system will be available February 28th, um, which normally would be the last day of February, but we have a leap year this year. So keep in mind, February 28th is when this organizational account will come into existence. Um, when an individual, you know, an HR representative logs into their My USCIS account, they're going to be able to convert to an organizational account. And based on what USCIS has said, it's supposed to be a really easy process, which means that organizations really want to discuss in advance who and how they want to set up their organizational account so that they can get that all in alignment before any changes are made to anyone's My USCIS account. Great. So what sort of steps should HR be taking at this time? We've been talking with our HR teams and we recommend that HR teams discuss internally 
um, how they kind of want their working group set up. And then also talk with their attorney representatives so that as a team, they can all come up with the best way to create the working groups and who's going to be the first to set up that organizational account. So that's one of the things that we're looking at. Um, Mickey, this is kind of like preparing for the big game. You know, the Super Bowl is coming up. So the administrator, we can kind of think of the administrator as the quarterback within an organization. So that administrator is going to be able to invite other administrators to their particular group as well as members to their group. And the administrator could also invite legal representatives to collaborate with their particular working group or vice versa. A legal representative can create their working group and then reach out to invite an administrator to collaborate with that attorney. And that administrator's working group would be collaborating with the attorney's group. So it's one of those situations where the administrator is going to have the capability of signing the forms paying online, and then doing any particular edits. So the administrator is the one who's going to be in control, essentially, of the final signatory of that piece. Um, and that's working in conjunction with the attorney. So it's really important that we make sure that the administrator is someone within the company who has that signing authority uh, so that they can collaborate within this new organizational account. Yeah, so it, it sounds like, you know, it's going to be more seamless in terms of collaboration but within the organizations, um, within HR groups, and then also with the attorneys. But there are some limitations, though, right, of this new system? Yeah, I guess like with any new thing that gets rolled out, you know, there are some things that we don't necessarily think of right away. Uh, the limitation that we're discovering right now that we want to let our global mobility partners know about is that an individual may only be in one group at a time. So if you have a large immigration system and you want to divide your team based on um, internal divisions and have several groups, keep in mind that person that's in group A can, uh, can also not be a member of group B. So it's really important to define those groups before moving forward and creating the My USCIS organizational account on the platform. There isn't any way to delete or decline an invitation to a group. So the person just needs to let it expire. Um, and that's something that USCIS says that they might fix in the future. But right now, there is a workaround, which is you just create a new invitation and move forward with that organizational account. So, Mickey, you attended the recent USCIS Tech Talk, right, which they're having Tech Talks based on this new organizational account. So what did USCIS have to say about this limitation? Yeah, USCIS basically said that, like you mentioned, the signatory has to be an administrator on the account. So it seems like maybe USCIS didn't really realize that for companies with larger immigration programs, the signatory isn't always the day to day immigration contact right within the company. So, I mean, the good thing is that you can have multiple administrators. So HR teams can internally arrange for the administrator who's not the signatory to coordinate signatures and authorizations. Um, so we have some practical tips for HR, right? Um, one of the most important things as we're kind of honing in on right now is have a discussion with your attorney, with your legal team about these issues ahead of February 28th. You know, who is the signatory? Who's going to be the administrator? Which email addresses will be used for signatories, um, you know, who are not the day-to-day -day immigration contacts? you know, who's going to be added as members. So those are important things to discuss ahead of time, because once it's done, you know, especially the designation of the administrator, that's locked in. Um, the other tip is that if companies draft, uh, start the draft registrations and filings, those won't be accessible to attorney accounts. So a tip for HR people is don't try to get a head start when the window opens. Have a plan with your attorney as to who's going to do what at what time. So we have this new technology and we're seeing technology evolve every day, right? So what we have is some systems that are able to communicate with the government program. So essentially, um, an attorney might be able to prepare everything locally and then push it up into the government program. Um, what do you think about what's going to happen with this new organizational account and what has USCIS told us about this particular process of being able to push up the information to the government program. Yeah. So I think, Kimberly, you're talking mainly about APIs, right? 
Um, and USCIS has repeatedly said that they don't have API capability for case management systems that law firms use to integrate with the USCIS platform. And they didn't have that last year either. But our platform, Rapid, is a game changer for our industry in many ways. And even in the old system where USCIS didn't have the capability for API, um, our platform, Rapid, was able to leverage a plugin to auto-populate the data for registrations. And so at our firm, we love using automation wherever we can. Now, anytime you can automate data entry, you're eliminating the possibility for human error. And it also creates more time for our WR team to talk with HR and employees. So that's a really valuable thing to keep on top of. Um, Kimberly, in addition to CAP registration, uh, the organizational accounts do allow for online filings. Can you fill us in, fill us in on those updates? Yeah, absolutely. So initially, um, companies will be able to file H-1B petitions. So that will mean your CAP registrations that are selected in the lottery, those petitions can be filed online through the organizational account, as well as new H-1B petitions for change of employer or extensions or amended H-1B filings. They're all going to be permitted to be filed under the organizational account. And then premium processing requests, those I-907s can be submitted as well, um, either concurrently with an H-1B petition or separately if you're going to upgrade a regular processing case to premium processing. So it's, it's great, right? Because USCIS is leveraging new technology. Um, and one of the benefits is that it's going to save time and money, right? The time savings would result in not having to send things via FedEx or USPS. Um, and then you don't have to deal with going through the mail room at the immigration service, right? It's going to go directly up into the USCIS system. So it does save on shipping costs and trees. Um, right now, under the new fee schedule that the USCIS has announced, um, filings that are submitted to the immigration service online will have essentially a $50 discount. Um, so that's going to be a little bit cheaper than the hard copy filing. And one of the other benefits is that the receipt notices are going to be available immediately, and they will be available in the online account. Um, so copies of the notices will still be sent via mail. So it's fortunate that we're going to have the online system and then a backup, so to speak, with the hard copy, because I know as attorneys, sometimes we want that physical piece of paper in our hands as do uh, foreign national beneficiaries. Um, so one of the downsides is that this platform right now only allows for the filings of H-1B petitions and not the H-4 applications or H-4 EAD card applications for family members. So if there is an H-1B employee that has a spouse and or children and the H-1B petition is filed online, the H-4 applications and or H-4 EAD will have to be filed hard copy through the mail. So they won't be able to benefit with that concurrent filing that we have right now where we submit everything via hard copy. Yeah. So, oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just going to say, is there anything that you have to add to that? Yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, we're all anticipating glitches in the system initially. And I tell HR teams that, you know, until USCIS works out all the kinks, you know, be ready with a paper filing to USCIS. We don't want our clients to be the guinea pigs, right? So most of our clients will be waiting to use the online system for anything other than CAP registrations in just the immediate term um, when this rolls out in mid-February. Uh, but that said, there are some situations in which it would be worth thinking about or pursuing the online option, you know, particularly if someone's OPT or STEM OPT is expiring during the first few days of April when the CAP filing window opens. Uh, so HR partners should work with their attorneys to identify cases that, you know, they might want to consider for online filings. So I think there are a couple of, you know, on a, more than a couple, but a few unanswered questions at this point in terms of the system rollout. Um, and one of them is that, uh, you know, if HR teams want to make edits to the forms that attorney teams have drafted, you know, the company accounts have system permissions to make edits. So, you know, we don't know if when HR teams make edits, whether those will be flagged for the attorney team. Um, so it's a good idea to contact your uh, legal team if that, you know, is a situation that you come up with where you have to make edits. And there's also a size limit of 12 megabytes for supporting documents for online filings right now. 
Um, we don't know if we can upload multiple um, 12 meg files or just one. So we'll learn more from USCIS in coming weeks. So tune in to our second installment of our LinkedIn Live for more updates as everything sort of unfolds and we learn more. Um, in the meantime, though, it's a good idea to make sure you've captured all your employees and candidates for the CAP H1 registration. So, you know, maybe you want to use your I-9 reports to make sure you've captured everyone. Um, if you have questions, uh, please post in the comments or send us a direct message and tune into our future LinkedIn Live and follow us on our LinkedIn. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you and good luck with your registrations.